Hello, sir. Welcome to Bial Talks. Delighted to be here. So it's our pleasure to host you today. Uh, in the session you took with AMP student, you spoke about your first book, The Rose yeah. of the Line. Yeah. So we want to know how did you come up with the idea called Chanakya's Chan? Uh, well, the story actually happened uh, as a matter of chance. Uh, I was uh, sitting at uh, Delhi Airport, and I think if I'm not mistaken, the uh, general elections had just got over. This is 2009. And, uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of jockeying going on for cabinet positions. This is the time of UPA 2. UPA 2 had just been elected a second time. And uh, I thought to myself, I said, it's been several weeks since the election and there is so much confusion. And why is politics always so messy? Isn't there, was there a time when politics wasn't so messy? And, you know, the, the perfect example of ancient politics actually is the time of Chandragupta Maurya and yeah. uh, the actions of Kautilya. So I thought to myself, I said, is there a way that I can actually compare what politics was? When, because we, we, when we talk about the ancient times, we always talk about the good old days. But were the good old days really good? Yeah. Uh, and so that was what was interesting to me. Uh, to be able to talk about how the politics of yesteryears was actually the same as the politics of today. And that the only difference is that the people have changed, that the props that we use have changed. In the old days when you wanted to uh, sort a political dispute, you took an army along with chariots and elephants and you sorted your political dispute. Today we bring down governments in parliament or we uh, you know, uh, simply uh, have engineered defections. Uh, or we simply lose a vote. Uh, so politics, ultimately, the nature of politics has not changed. Uh, I think it was Lao Tzu who said that uh, politics is actually warfare without bloodshed. Uh, and uh, so whether it's war or whether it's politics, it's the same. That was the that was the genesis of Chanakya's chant. Uh, sir, you also spoke about your rejections, which is a very important part in your journey. In anyone's journey, for yeah. that matter. So how to tackle with the rejections, especially if you are in such a creative field, writing, cinematography? Yeah. Uh, I think it's difficult because uh, the truth is that when you're going through rejections, you're not very sure that, uh, is this it? Uh, it's far easier to talk about rejection and failure uh, at the time when you've already made it. Uh, then, in fact, you can wear it almost like a badge of honor. Uh, you can yeah. say... Oh, see, despite all the odds, I made it. So it's far easier to talk about rejection at that time rather than talking about it when you are going through it. Having said that, you need to figure out ways in order to keep yourself going and to retain a positive approach. I do not believe failure is falling down. I believe not getting up after that failure is real failure. Uh, so uh, I would say that A, Figure out ways to motivate yourself even when you're going through failure. In my case, for example, I used to keep a scorecard of rejections uh, and that used to motivate me. I would say, okay, fine. Now I've got 30 rejections or 35 rejections. I wore it almost like a badge of honor. Uh, the other part of it is that I would then apply to fresh publishers so that there was always hope at the end of Horizon that, okay, maybe some something will click. Uh, and I would imagine, I would look at stories of other writers in order to figure out as to what is it that they went through. Because sometimes when you look at those stories, you realize that yours is not that different. So I think it's very important to figure out ways to keep yourself motivated enough to keep going. Uh, so, um, internet and social media is a blessing today, for especially for the young writers or yeah. people who want to establish themselves. Yes. But... Um, don't you think it's blurring the difference between producer and consumers? In what way? So if, um, like writing and reviewing. Yes. So if, if somebody is writing something yes. and there's someone reviewing it. Yes. So to, and everybody, everybody is writing. Like yes. everyone has their page. Everybody, today everybody is a writer. Everybody is a Snapchat. Everybody is yes. on Instagram. Yes. So. Well, well, first of all, we have to understand that there is a, a bit of a difference between simply writing and storytelling. Uh, I think 
uh, for too long we have called writers writers, which according to me is a misnomer, because as you rightly said, everyone is a writer. Everyone can write a hundred and forty or a two hundred and eighty character tweet. Uh, exactly. So that makes by that definition everyone is a writer, uh, but not everyone is a storyteller, and that is really what I think distinguishes because. Uh, you should attempt to one day sit down and see what it takes to actually write a uh, hundred thousand words, uh, a story in a hundred thousand words, and one would realize that hey, listen, there is a science to the process. There's a science and an art uh, to that process. So I have always believed that those who are storytellers uh, should also, when when it comes to other people's work, uh, they should be equally. Uh, they should be equally cautious about the fact that they are judging that work as a story rather than judging it on its language. Mm -hmm. We get too uh, hung up on language and words. For me, words are not important. Uh, ultimately, either a story is good and compelling or it isn't. Then you can find a dime a dozen editors to polish your work or to tell you that instead of this word, you could have used this. And instead of this comma here, you should use a semicolon. All of that, there are enough people who can do that for you. Well, last question. How does writing change a writer? Oh, there are parts of yourself that you would not have explored uh, before, the, before you sat down to write. And very often you look at your fictional characters and you say, I'm wondering where that element came in from. Uh, I find myself as a storyteller having become far more observant of people. I'll walk into a room and I'll meet 10 people and I, I will be picking up on their nuances. I'll be picking up on what they said. I'm curious nowadays. I've become a far better listener. I used to hear people, but I used to not listen to people. Now I listen because every story fascinates me. Very often people have something to reveal about their lives which becomes interesting material for a future book. Uh, so I think uh, one of the key traits to be a storyteller is to be a good listener. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here. And thank you for inviting me over.